Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello, everybody. Hello, Dr. Normal. <laughs> you don't have to say it's so exciting. It's a great Friday <laughs> night, by the way. Yes, I Here love Fridays-ish. Ten- Ish. You know, the weather's gotten a little hot. Can I introduce our guest? <laughs> sure. Wait, okay. I thought you wanted me to. No, no, you can stop talking now. It's okay. Okay. This evening, we're joined by Brett Burnmeister from Good evening. foodcartsportland.com. Yes. And Greg Abbott. Hello. Of Whiffy's fame. Whiffy's. Whiffy's. <laughs> he did not bring me any pies, but it's his day off, so I'm okay with that. Friday night. Oh, totally wait, my, no, totally I mean, today's off. your, yeah, yeah, you took the day off. <laughs> the host needs to keep stuff straight. All right, what is foodcartsportland.com? Food Carts Portland is a website that uh, showcases the food carts in Portland. Uh, Portland is one of those cities that is just thriving with food carts, by last count, 400 plus. And um, the site was started a few years ago by uh, Cuisine Bon Femme. Mm-hmm. As really just a site where she could tell people about her love of food carts. And uh, over the past year, I've uh, taken on a role of uh, running the site and, and blogging for the site. And there's a new food cart opening up every day or every week. And it's hard to keep up, but we're doing our best. So originally, it started kind of a as a food cart fan site? Yes. Yes. Food cart enthusiast Enthusiast. Foodies like of food cart. Yes. And now, I mean, do you guys rate the food carts? Do you just talk about the food cart to the food cart culture? What goes on now? We, we don't rate them. Um, okay. We're very egalitarian. Um, there, we, there's no value in whether, say, in, in, in critiquing a food cart. Um, a food cart's going to um, win or, uh, or succeed or fail um, based on the food cart. And so based our, on its own merit? Based on its own merit, based on what they're serving. And so our role is really to just tell you about it mm-hmm. and g- give you a, tell you where it's at. Uh, tell you what they do, whether it's something new or something old or something fusion. And then also to give you an example of what the menu's like. And uh, and then, you know, prices, etc. So you can search or you can uh, go out and find out what's for lunch today. So you guys are the food cart profilers. Yes, that's a good way to put it. How many people are writing for Food Cart Portland? Right now, three or four. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm the primary writer. Uh, Cuisine Bon Femme is still involved. And then um, we just... Hold on, a new writer, um, and we have a couple of people that uh, kind of come and go when they want to. Food writers. And are there criteria? So, I mean, 400 plus food carts in Portland. I have eaten at maybe seven, yeah. which is kind of sad now that I think about it. But uh, how, is there a criteria for listing the food carts, or just as you find them? Exactly, as we find them. Um, I, I work downtown, and so honestly, my I try to keep up with what's downtown, and, and like I said, they're new every every week. But there's also the outlying areas. An example, over the weekend, um, while in southeast Portland, we stopped by a food cart out off 82nd, and I am going to butcher the name, Cora E. Huchol, and it was a taqueria. Mm-hmm. Great, great food. And, uh, you know, that'll be, that that uh, post will go up sometime this week. Just a review. You know? Just it's up. It's out there. It's out there. And, you, you know, it. there are food carts out on 50th and Division that I haven't been to. There are food carts out in Gresham that I've been invited to, mm-hmm. um, et cetera. So they're all over. But, um, no, there's no criteria, just whatever we can find. Again, egalitarian. Yeah. Okay. So in your experience, the 400-plus food carts, are there a lot of similarities between them? Are there? I mean, is it, like, to each their own? Or what's the most common theme you find in a food cart? Well, The way I think about it is there's always going to be, and historically um, in Portland, there was always the Asian food carts, Mm -hmm. the Thai food carts, etc. Then the taco carts, uh, the taquerias, as another, there are many of them. And then thirdly, um, hot dogs Mm -hmm. and your basic um, hot dog cart, sausage cart. But we've then, over the past couple years, um, we've evolved, Portland has evolved into more what I'm calling artisan food carts. Mm -hmm. Um, Whiffy's is a perfect example. Nobody was doing anything Mm -hmm. even remotely like what Whiffy's is doing with the fried pies. We also have a cart focused just on Belgian fries. 
you know, double, mm. how would you say it? Double, um, they're double fried. Double fried. French, French fries. Fried. And they're just, and they're, they're just brilliant. We Amazing have vegan sauces. barbecue cart now. I, I think I read the article, the post on that one. Not yet. Or maybe but it was I tweeted thing. about it. Yes. Um, again, we have track of things, Kim. Korean fusion. We have, um, grilled cheese. We have a cart focused just on grilled cheese sandwiches. Mm-hmm. There's so, also a soup cart that does soup and grilled cheese as well, yes, yeah? Yes, there are a couple of them. I'm just, and so so the idea is we're, we're evolving into what um, Portland does well. Um, first, we were really loving ch- uh, coffee and beer, and then mm-hmm. we were, did a whole chocolate artisanship. And now I think it's food carts where um, the, the restaurateurs and the chefs out there who may not want to dive into a restaurant just yet or may not want to assume that kind of debt they're starting up food carts and there it allows them more freedom to do what they want to do that's very specific to their style of food my other question on that is recently uh, we film in selwood mm-hmm. and not just recently but on saturday uh apparently was capril's kitchens mm-hmm. i don't they've oh, yeah. changed the name of the restaurant a few times but capril and john pence had a had a restaurant in selwood for the last i think 16, 13 years. It's been over a decade. Yeah. And I guess Saturday was their last day and they closed their doors. And I look at that and I've eaten there several times. And the food is fantastic. I love the food. But it's a large restaurant with a large staff mm-hmm. and high overhead. And I can't help but think I can get a meal just as good at a cart in Portland if I know where to look. Mm-hmm. And do you think that the current economy has anything to do with the surge of food cart love in Portland? It, it could. I'm... I'm I don't know, um, and I haven't really um, had that conversation with um, many of the food cart um, new owners of food carts. Mm-hmm. But um, in, a, in a discussion I had with uh, Matt Breslow, who uh, owns and opened up the Grilled Cheese Grill up in Northeast Alberta mm-hmm. this um, past fall or winter, winter. Um, the way he put it was: there's restaurant money, mm-hmm. there's food cart money. Yeah, and he said, "I have food cart money." There, to to open up a restaurant is is four times. I mean, again, here's what he described to me: four times what it would cost to to um, open up a food cart. And so, again, it's a foray into something that you could grow and maybe become a restaurant, maybe become a franchise. Um, Brunch Box just opened up their second cart. There's precedence. There, the people are expanding. There are five or six Fuego burrito carts, and they've been around for 10 years um, or yeah. eight years. There are multiple um, whole bowls. Would you ever see a whole bowl in a restaurant? Not necessarily, because it's one thing. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not sure if the economy is forcing people into food carts, if that's well, the I don't, question. I don't, I don't think I meant that it was forcing it. I just think that as an intelligent consumer, when you're thinking about going and grabbing a bite to eat for lunch or for dinner... If you didn't pack your lunch, or if you just want to go grab something, mm-hmm. you know, there's the difference between going and sitting down oh, in right. a restaurant and, ma- and paying a bunch of money. Mm-hmm. And so if the consumers aren't being driven toward the restaurants, if they're going to the food carts, then yay, boon for a food cart. Um, because we just don't have a lot of excess cash to go around these mm-hmm. days. If you have a job, you're lucky that you have one and you're thankful for it. If you don't have a job, you're minding every penny that you have. Um. I, I would agree with that, um, especially in spring and summer when the food carts have really grown. Um, we've added, you know, 20, 30 carts in the mm-hmm. past just six months. In September, it'll start raining again. <clears throat> now, again, like I said, fo- the bulk of the food carts in, are in downtown Portland. There's not a lot of places where the food carts are to sit and eat. Not a, You don't have places. So will we see a shift back to a restaurant back to the cafes back to the delis because it's raining outside or will portland in its traditional support the little guy um mentality continue to go to the food carts and go hang out at you know the u.s bank tower or the galleria or the basement of some of the um larger buildings that have cafeterias places to sit i i still think that'll happen will the food carts be as busy I don't know. I mean, that's, I'm not an economist. Might happen, might not. But, you know, one of the things that um, there, there's a, there is a perception that food carts are cheaper, um, but traditionally they were less expensive than a traditional lunch. 
Now, again, as we get more into a um, artisan type of a food and artisan types of offerings, and then also the um, the cost for of food has gone up in the past few years. Yes. You're not able to usually find a good meal for under five or six dollars anymore, um, and that's been a shock to some of my um, food cart peers. <laughs> if you want to go over to Whiffies, <laughs> unless, you know, yeah. but like um, you know, you can get a good, you know, even a good Thai dish is going to be six dollars now yeah. or five fifty. Um, there are some gems out there that are are still inexpensive, but there are certain. There are certain carts that you kind of use as a as a gauge for economics. When you see them go up a dollar, you realize that everybody's going to start going up a dollar because, again, it has nothing to do with the. Com- it's not them trying to gouge the customer. It's just the cost of the raw goods has gone up. So, Greg, why did you open with these? How long ago, and why did you start it? Um, I opened on May twenty second. I think oh, I, you're a little baby food cart. I'm a tiny little baby. <laughs> I'm a tiny little baby food cart for sure. Um, I opened May 22nd. Uh, I turned 30 last September, mm-hmm. and I had this. You know, you are a baby. I am a little oh. baby, not just in a food cart. I'm just a baby <laughs> altogether. But I turned 30, and I was like, you know, what I was doing was okay. I was making enough money doing what I was doing, but I wasn't really happy doing what I was doing. And I had, like, a job that was sort of solitary and not really meeting my needs. And so in December, I sat down with my dad, and I was like, look, I need to do something different. And he was like, all right, what do you want to do? And we sort of, you know, talked through the issues, you know, talked through the, the sort of ideas that we had. And the, the food cart is something that he and I had been kicking around for, like, 10 years. Like, oh, we could do this thing. And then, and then you know, I, like, literally woke up, and I was like, that's what I'm going to do. And then, you know, it took me it took me the better part of four months just to get everything put together. So did you wake up and go, hey, I'm going to do a food cart? Or did you wake up and go, hey, I'm going to do a food cart with only fried pies? That's tough because at first, at first, I, really, at first I wasn't quite 100% sold on the pies. Mm-hmm. My dad wanted me to sell hand pies, but he wanted me to sell baked hand pies. And, like, I, they're good, but they weren't, like, great. And so we were, so it was actually, I had already bought the cart and I was there working through like the ideas that we were coming up with for baked hand pies when I was like, this isn't working. And like I had this moment where we were standing there with a whole tray of raw pies and I was like, this is not working. I don't know. And the fryer was turned on and I walked over with the fryer and I was like, you know what I mean? This is what we're going to do. And I drove the thing in the fryer and he's like, I don't think this is a good idea. And I was like, you're probably right. And then we came out and we had eaten, we had eaten like a whole you know, at that point, we had eaten a whole bunch with his staff of baked pies. I gotta ask how many pies were eaten because, as we all know, it's a big, almost a rite of passage. Yeah. In the Portland <laughs> food, I, I can eat more with these pies than you can. I can't. I can eat one with these pie, and that's my limit. I know my limits. I don't overreach. But how many pies were eaten, and what's the current pie champ? The current pie. Ch- the current pie champ ate nine pies in an hour. He really ate eight. Of, he really ate eight of them in like thirty-five minutes, and then the last twenty. In like some sort of sadistic thing, I brought out a durian cream pie to try to induce. You know, I was like, "Here, try this," and he broke it open. And he was like, "Oh," but he ate it unfazed, like without blinking. He and like at the end, his hands were covered in durian cream, and he was like, <laughs> "And I was like, oh, please don't do that." <laughs> so nine pies in an hour. Nine pies. Do you think anyone's ever going to beat that record? Yeah. I, th- I don't know if anyone's ever actually going to try for that record, but I don't think it's unbeatable. I'm pretty sure I could eat 10 pies. Okay, and how many pies? Oh. That, Did you hear? You heard what he said. Right. He said yes. he could eat in an hour. I'm ready. Throw down. And not have a Roman incident? No. Uh, so we should probably talk about the background of that uh, pie champ uh, event, oh, right? Yeah. Using uh, social media and then... Oh. Well, yeah, that's yeah. what I wanted to talk to you about him. because he's for free he's food. from May, so you've right. got a very young food cart, but it's kind oh, of yeah. become like a cult favorite among the tech scene, uh, certainly. <laughs> the tech crowd has come out to support me like I am like nobody's business. I'm so thankful and so lucky to have the sort of... I met him through Twitter. Yeah. The sort of crowd that I have and the sort of... The way that social media has really worked out for me has been incredible you know what i mean they're just it's 
it's kind of ridiculous how fast everything happened. Is, so, is that why you um, chose to um, do the pie champ and support like freegeek.org, which is the local computer? Freegeek.org. Yeah, they build uh, cheap computers for it. Uh, Schools and they accept nonprofits. they accept donations yeah. of used computers from people and they rehab them for people who might not otherwise be able to get computers on their own. Mm-hmm. I believe is the right. That was what that was the the thing, and that was really uh, Betsy Richter's idea. That was really Betsy's idea. The whole that whole thing, like the week before that, or yeah, the week before that, or ten days before that, I had done an event for Cube Space, which was the local place for the tech community like it was the it was the local sort of like meetup place for the tech community the co-working yeah. space and kind of a portland clubhouse right it was, yeah essentially and so she was like you know we should find some good thing to do with this and i was like totally you know what i mean I, and i love free geek those guys have been those guys have really saved my life on multiple occasions <laughs> i need this old cable that no one could ever find in a million years and they're like oh hey we have 25 of them in a box here and so um, the whole pie champ thing was also that was Raven's idea, really. Mm-hmm. The small society. The first, guy. first pie champ. First was pie Raven champ Zachary. was Raven Zachary from Small Society, and he was he was the one who pushed the he was even the one that pushed the whole event that happened the week afterwards. Yep. Like that he was tweeted his. one night. I'm on my fifth pie. Yeah. Should I keep going? And this is a uh, uh, self-avowed at the time no sugar vegan. Uh, and he's sitting there eating seven Whiffies fruit pies. And I was there when he started and didn't realize that he was going to go for it. And I remember reading the tweets. It was like this horror movie. I'm just like yeah. reading it. Going, no, stop, Raven. Stop. Don't do it, man. He's like rail thin and yeah. tall. and Yeah, so it's yeah, kind of fun. It does not look like he should be able to consume that many pies in an hour. But the, 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 the pie off, um, not the pie off, I'm not sorry, the pie the, off, the pie, the pie champion. champion gathered six people, and it was mostly just six guys who, who kept throwing down via Twitter. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I can eat more than you. Mm-hmm. I can eat more than you. And then, you know, half of, or three quarters of them ate half of what the winner did. And yeah. it was a fun event, though. It was great. And there were like 200 people there. God, I can't believe how that many, was I can't so believe crowded. how many people came out. Like, it's crazy. Really, I was, like, I was so blown was away. A, I was like, "This yeah, is it was a cool evening." Even it wasn't a, it wasn't raining. But it was a nice night. It was a nice yeah, it was night. Nice. It was one of the first nice nights of the summer. Yeah. And I noticed something very important then, and you you brought it up. Most of the pies that were consumed were consumed in the first half an hour. Oh yeah. And then there was a huge lull for like twenty five minutes, and then the last five minutes there was this sudden push. No, oh, maybe I can. Oh, so good. I couldn't watch though. Watching the last couple of fights was miserable. Yeah, I couldn't watch. And then one of my friends was competing, and where normally I would have given him a hug goodbye, I was like, good night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be near you in case something bad happens because yeah. he just looked so ill. I was like, oh my gosh. But it was for a good cause. Mm-hmm. And if you're not eating nine of them at a time, the pies are fantastic. Mm-hmm. So it was a good idea. Definitely. I know. I feel, I feel bad. I'm like, oh, it makes me want to be sick. No, wait, but the pies are good. Um, so it was just ambition. You needed to do something with your life, and that's what caused you to open the cart. Yeah. Yeah. I think more, yeah, and I, and I think that... Like it was sort of the perfect storm of things. Like I really needed to, I really needed to be more social. I needed to be more, you know what I mean. Like I was really shut in at that point. I was just like, you know, trapped in my own apartment, shut in outside of the world. And then all of a sudden, I was like, like between Twitter and this, like all of a sudden there were like all of these new people. You know what I mean? So like, were you on Twitter before you opened the cart? Yeah, yeah. I've been on Twitter since I don't know, like the very, very beginning. My personal account's been on Twitter for forever. And, like, I was on there, and you know what I mean? I used it mostly to communicate with people that I already knew. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, I, I had made, you know, tiny inroads into, you know, the sort of Twitter community. And then with the pie cart thing, it really took off. Like with Whiffies, it took off like nobody's business. I couldn't believe how many, like, I can't tell you how many new people I've met in the last four months. It's like, that's like, for everything else, that has really been the, the coolest part of this whole thing. It's just like, how many new people I've met and how many new people I've like really gotten to know. That's really kind of awesome. Very cool. So first Twitter, then the idea 
Yeah. And then they kind of combine together. Do a lot of other food cart entrepreneurs use social media, use Twitter? Yes. Um, right now. I think I follow three food carts, mm-hmm. maybe four. Yeah, I know some there's of the, more. Most of the new new guard, most of the newer food carts are very um, social media you know, aware. Mm-hmm. Um, they have websites, they have blogs, they're on Twitter, they're, they're on Facebook. Um, etc. They have fan pages, um, and then slowly some of the old guards, some of the carts that have been around for for many years and were really the pioneers um, in doing this, they're starting to come online with with by um, publishing an email address or by publishing you know having a website to show their menu, something simple, but still you know catering to that new. That new demographic that maybe that's all they want to how, that's their method of discovering anything is like I, if it's not on the internet it doesn't exist mm-hmm. and um you know my the first one I, I i ever saw that really embraced social media was the brunch box mm-hmm. and um and then it was you know i connected via um greg and we you know i just kind of threw out one day hey, we're having a tweet up and greg shut up <laughs> all the thousands of Twitterers I know, and Greg came, and, uh, <laughs> and that was great because um, I was able to chat with Greg about, you know, how do you acquire a cart and what, what, because he was building his cart at the time. It was, mm-hmm. it was a, I, I still remember that as as one of the one of the best conversations about like a food cart entrepreneur going through the motions, um, and then you know, just goes on from there. So, from the perspective of a man who eats at a whole lot of food carts, <laughs> and the man that owns and operates one, <laughs> I want some helpful insight for people who maybe, I remember my mom came to visit, and she's pretty open-minded about most things, but vaguely freaked out about it. I was like, no, we're going to go up, we were going up to this uh, 13th avenue pod to go to garden state and she was freaked out and my dad was like on the phone no don't why are you go to a food cart that's it's not good and i was like no it's portland it's not the same thing they live in the midwest they have food carts at like baseball games that's pretty that. much the status quo so for those people who aren't comfortable with the idea or who aren't sure what to think some helpful guidelines for choosing a good cart to eat from well yeah, it's, it's that is <laughs> or, a big challenge. Or, or what to know? Because it's find uh, the dirtiest one. Find the dirtiest carton. That's, that's one way to put it. Um, well, the way, I was before I really even. I mean, I've always enjoyed going to food carts. I've been, you know, I, I remember going to my first food cart back in 1991 at Pioneer Cross Square, you know, honking huge burritos. That's the first and, food cart I ever yeah, went to was Shelley's honking huge burritos. And you know that was just like mind blowing. It was like crazy and then you know in the past 10 years when i've worked downtown yeah there's always been the food carts now it's five meals a week but um (laughs) you know back a few years ago i remember chatting with a friend who travels a lot internationally and eats a lot of street food and i and i made a comment about it and he's like you know one of the things to remember is that it's a small business it's like the ultimate small business the person making the food and the person taking your money and the person taking your order is the owner Mm -hmm. usually and that you're the you're their one customer right then, and if they make you sick because something's not clean, you're not going to come back. Right. And if you think of street food as in a in a more what his experience was in an international experience was that that was the restaurant that was the place where everybody went. If you mess up your relationship with your community and your you know because you were dirty you will not be open. And so I, I kind of took that in the same way, and that's what I, as an advocate for food carts with my peers who are like, oh, they don't have bathrooms, or things like that. It's like, yeah, but if they're going to make you sick, you're not going to go back, right? And if they make enough people sick, they're going to close down. So most of the food carts, 90%, I bet all of the food carts in Portland are very clean. So that's the first thing to get past. Mm-hmm. Second thing is pick your kind, the kind of food you like, Go to foodcartsportland.com. <laughs> <laughs> Got my plug in. <laughs> and, um, and, and check it out. I mean, there, there's something for everybody out there. And, um, you know, in, in one block downtown, there are four or five different Mexican ta- uh, taquerias. Yeah. And each one of them is unique in their own way. Each one of them has their own niche. They all serve tacos. But this one, they might do the best sopa. This one does New Mexican version of mm-hmm. of uh um well new mexican cuisine um so yeah there's there anything you want comfort food healthy food vegan food good salad mm-hmm. it's out there yeah and 
I'm like him. I eat at food carts. I eat 12 meals a week at food carts. <laughs> um, I would if there were more within walking distance because I'm lazy. <laughs> but, um, How do you pick a good food cart? Do you tend to eat at the same food carts time and time again? I know that you've tweeted occasionally, Brett, you know, instead of going to this one that I go to all the time, I really should go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So do you guys tend to eat at different food carts or do you have some like favorites? And then past that, how do you pick a good food cart, Greg? I don't know. I, but I use, I use his, I use his blog or his website. I use, um, I'm a part of the PDX cart groupies Mm -hmm. and we, you know, we've made it sort of our goal to eat everything in town. You know, there are six or eight of us that eat every day. And that's, uh, so, you know what I mean? I talk to my friends, um, and really I just try everything. Like Mm -hmm. I'm, like I'm sort of fearless about what I'm eating and, you know, there's so much right now, there's so much good food going on that like rarely do you get a bad meal at a food cart downtown Mm -hmm. right now, right now, the, 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 you know what I mean? It's been sort of. But a lot of the stuff has been ferreted out that isn't good, mm-hmm. hasn't survived, hasn't, you know. The, the food cart scene is fairly vibrant now with really decent food. In Portland, you've you, you're pr- you got a pretty good bet that you're going to have something good to eat. Mm-hmm. So we've had, I mean, I've, Portland has not so recently, but still recently come on the scene as having a lot of excellent food. Whereas we used to kind of be, you know, unheard of. If you thought of the West Coast, you'd think of maybe San Francisco, um, maybe Seattle, but San Francisco more so. And lately, I I think that Portland has really come into its own in the food realm. But when I think of food in Portland, I mean, you know, you think of a few really, really nice restaurants. But if I'm going to think about a meal, generally speaking, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go down the street and grab something at like the local diner or I'm going to go to a food cart and grab something are a lot. I mean, does it seem like more people are thinking that way now? Um, I, I, I do. Yeah. I think that because they're so prolific that, um, more people are exposed to them. So I think now close in, in every neighborhood, um, Southwest, Northwest, Northeast and Southeast, there's a food car pod. Mm-hmm. And so it, it, if you are living closer in, you know, um, you, you, you see them every day. And so it might pique your interest to go try this um, artisan pizza, you know, by the slice or do grab the meatball sandwich at Garden State. Um, uh, this little is, rosemary potato. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> is, everybody, is everybody in Portland eating at food carts every day? Well, probably not. But, um, but again, you know, everybody's exposed to it. You know, a majority of Portlanders work downtown. Um, and so there are three giant, four now, four giant uh, like, um, whole parking lots full of food carts. If you don't know where the food carts are, I'd be concerned that you're living in a, you know, a hermit's life in Portland downtown. A little bit um, of a bubble. <laughs> but, um, yeah. As far as, um, uh, as favorites or how I choose... Um, there, there's stuff that I just don't care for, mm-hmm. you know, different types of food or, you know, it all depends on the day. Sometimes I really just need a salad or some days I just need something quick. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when it's something quick, yeah, it is easy to just go down to the deli in the building and grab a sandwich that's really bad, buttery and, you know, but I, I choose to venture out an extra five minutes and maybe I'll just grab a grab a bratwurst. Um, or if I do have the time, yeah, I'll go venture out to a place that I know might take me 15 to 20 minutes to get my food. But you know what? That is excellent food. And it might take 20 minutes, not because it takes that long to cook it, but because there's a line. Yeah. You know, people know the yeah. good cards. So what's the like, best locator? I mean, is it is there a good mapping locator? Do you have something on foodcarts.com? Or is it following Twitter you know, just doing the social networking thing and following these guys. Do you have any well, advice? Um, we do catalog all of ours, um, and each card has a, a, a Google map associated with it with their address. Um, there is an, uh, a woman out there, Audrey, who has a um, food cart mashup uh, Google map. Audrey is just, right? just is looking that, at that. I is that I heart, Spinnerin? I heart Are you talking about Spinnerin? She's also doing that. Are you talking that. about Spinnerin? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 
And so she has a mashup uh, card to map. Um, I'm not, I haven't been to it in a while, so I'm not sure how updated it is because that would be hard to keep updated. Yeah. They were just um, they were just in my cart the other night, and they were talking about the update that they were working on her and Breed and mm-hmm. Don P. I think we're talking yeah, about their new. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then Yelp um, is a nope. uh, great resource. They, they 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 have all of them. It seems. Yeah. Um, I I, uh, I hate pimping my competition, I guess, but you know, it's not about that. It's if I'm looking for a phone number and I can't find it, I'll I'll hit Yelp. So you're, right. not, you're likely to get someone's home cell phone number and call them <laughs> in the middle of the night. I did find the uh, I'll throw the uh, the map up on the uh, screen here, and this the map is, is linked on <laughs> Food Cards Portland. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yes. oh, oh, look at example. that; it's insane. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, before we go, I want to say you've just come home like within the week. From a cross-country trek, yes. was there a lot of street food to be had <laughs> on the adventure? Um, you know, I didn't seek it, seek it out. Um, I was on a lot of freeways. But it and didn't a lot find of, you? Didn't find me, no. Um, I was on a lot of highways off the beaten path. There were, there were taco trucks <laughs> in the south and taquerias all over the place. Um, but no, it wasn't... Uh, it wasn't a mission of the trip, so but uh, they're out there. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think Portland's unique in having so many. I do. I it's one of the quirky things that I like about our city. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Stay tuned for after hours in a few minutes, and next week we'll be talking about CreateCon. Thank you. Thank you.